Everything in your life has been leading to this month. Everything this year has been leading to this mother of a month. Everything that has ever existed in our universe has been leading to this month. All bullshit aside though like december 2021 let's talk about it i know the last few months i've been like a lot more dramatic about the monthly astrology than usual but a lot has happened as we've been seeing in the world like the last few months have really ramped up compared to like summer but like no bullshit you guys december starts us into a bang it is kind of ending the year but starting something totally fucking new at the same fucking time it's a lot so sit down just chill out and hang out with me while we talk about why december is likely bigger than january i mean we all knew like the year started off with a bang which i also talked about before january even hit and how january was gonna be crazy but like this is like on a whole nother level okay you guys if you've been watching my videos lately, I've been talking about how these last few months of 2021 are not coming to play and it's all leading up to this month and specifically December and January 2022, February 2022, and March 2022. Like, it's just freaking insane. So kick your feet up, relax for a little bit, get something to drink, something to eat, and let's talk about December mother in 2021 and the astrology and my predictions for it. I am just going to give a disclaimer here because there's no easy way to talk about some of this stuff. If in our reality and in the world, if anything matches what we see in the astrology, it is not going to be an easy next few months, okay? And there's just no way to sugarcoat that. Not to say that these next few months can't have some kind of positive significance or that we can't have moments of positive. For the most part, like these next few months are going to be groundbreaking, destructive. There's going to be a lot of collective fear because Pluto is involved and Pluto was involved with the shit show that started us in 2020, that started this whole freaking saga that we've been in of the v word that you cannot say just like all of that shit you know what i'm talking about but basically <laughs> december is a month that is probably as big because it's really really kind of easing us into the U.S.'s Pluto return. Pluto is returning to the same exact spot that it was in the U.S.'s charts when the U.S. became a nation, July 4th, 1776. Pluto has not been at this spot since then. Now, there has been tons of empires and civilizations and stuff that have went through Pluto returns and made it out alive, so I'm not saying we're all gonna die or it's the end of the world. I don't think it's like that dramatic. But we can see a lot of other things that I will go over and I'm going to be doing tons of separate videos on probably like each one of these big things coming up so don't worry. But in this video specifically I'm going to touch on some stuff because it starts in December like a lot of things start in December. By the end of December it's just going to be nuts. Although because a lot of this stuff is happening in Capricorn because Capricorn is ruled by Saturn Saturn kind of takes its time. It's like the catalyst start this month but we may not see like the actual real life things happening maybe until next month or a few months just like the cv really started the end of 2019 but we didn't hear or really know about it it didn't become like a big thing until like february march of 2020 that's kind of what i mean by this like this month is like the catalyst what this is all leading up to is a major fucking reality check like if i could sum all of this up in two words it would be a major fucking reality check especially in the u.s but the u.s is so tied in and to the rest of the the world and that like it's going to ripple and echo throughout the world as well and the world is going to be experiencing a lot of of these other crazy transits other than the pluto return so as you can tell i'm like very excited and passionate about this and like excited to talk about this hopefully it all makes sense i'm going to list timestamps down below so if you come back to this video anytime throughout the month and want to see like what's going on this week or what did she say about this time period or whatever you can do that and then i'm also working on the december sign horoscopes which will include previews of 2022 and recaps of 2021 so you definitely don't want to miss out on your signs readings for this month which will all be in one video again because i got too much to fucking do before we go any farther do me a favor and comment down below and let me know what you are feeling like it is just so eerie lately like i can just you can just feel something is about to pop off something really big is about to happen i've been saying that for like over a month now this month like is the catalyst to all of that so i'd love to know what 
what you're feeling and if anything I say rings a bell for you where you're like oh my god this could happen or I could see this happening or what you intuitively feel may happen I'd really really love to hear any of your feedback down below it would really mean a lot to me and it would really help me so anyways let's go ahead and get into it so December starts off with a bang we are in Sag season what is Sagittarius Sagittarius is a mutable fire sign ruled by Jupiter now everybody thinks like Big Daddy Jupiter is like a sugar daddy or Santa Claus or whatever and that is just not the case even just like looking back in history a lot of like really crazy shit that happened Jupiter was involved Jupiter's job is to expand magnify and make things bigger now Jupiter rules Sag so therefore it's gonna have that Sag is gonna have some of those qualities Sag is very optimistic it rules over ideologies philosophies belief systems laws dogmas hope and optimism higher educational pursuits it is an adventurous sign it is looking towards the future the reason this is so important is because we start off the month with a new moon solar eclipse in the sign of Sagittarius and this is so important because the last eclipse that is close enough to be an eclipse to the nodes that we will have in this Gemini Sag axis so if you think back to May 2020 in your life since May 2020 something has been increasing and decreasing and kind of going back and forth like there's been a lot of themes trends traits that have been coming up in your life patterns karmic shit and faded shit coming up wherever you have Gemini and Sag in your chart. This is because the nodes moved into these signs and wherever the nodes are really shows us where there's going to be an increase and a decrease, but also where there's going to be faded events and like a push towards something and a push away from something, but also karmic events which can blow up as well. So in May of 2020, the nodes shifted into Gemini and Sagittarius. This is why politics got so big because Sag rules over those kinds of things. ID ideologies, the moral law, our moralistic views and our worldviews, our political views, our belief systems, religion. You know, all of these themes are really big with the Sag South Node, but the South Node is in Sag. So where these things may seem like they're taking precedent, actually the North Node is in Gemini, which is about thinking for yourself individually and independently. And we've seen a rise in independent journalists, independent media sources, all of that because of that North Node in Gemini. It is about considering different sides, considering the facts and not getting lost in these big broad views and ideologies that may not actually be based in your real life day-to-day -day world. Gemini is like, okay, what is in your immediate environment? What's going on right here, right now? And Sag is like, well, hold on, what's going on over there in that country? That doesn't affect me whatsoever. Like, so the South Node being in Sag has really been transforming our worldviews. Like, I don't fucking know about you, but my views have changed dramatically. So with this November 4th, solar eclipse and Sagittarius this is a major moment where we're kind of coming full circle and we're seeing this new beginning but at the same time a, an ending a like blank slate of our worldviews and our belief systems this new moon solar eclipse is really bringing up that south node again these karmic things that need to be let go of like these karmic ideologies and belief systems that we are clinging to so this new moon solar eclipse in Sagittarius I think is a major major catalyst you could even say it's somewhat like a portal that we are moving through. To move through that portal, you're like going one place, but you're leaving behind another, right? That's what this new moon solar eclipse in Sagittarius is. It is a major moment, especially for the U.S. as well as Sagittarius is the U.S.'s ascendant. So this is really like reflecting on how have your beliefs, worldviews, political views, religious views, whatever, changed in the last year and a half? Like how... You know what I mean? How do you look at things and are your beliefs even really based in fact or truth? Or are you just believing things because it was easier to do or because someone said so? A lot of this stuff, like a lot of the things that we believe, it's because we read it somewhere or someone else said so. Like we're all guilty of this, but do we know if it's actually the truth? If it's actually based in fact or reality? How can we trust anything that's said anymore, you know? And that's what this Gemini North Node is really pointing out, I think. Anyway, so that's gonna come up really, really big time in the very beginning of the month and really all throughout Sagittarius season until the sun moves in Capricorn on December 21st. We could see a lot of political
political debates, political upheaval kind of going on as well. I believe with this solar eclipse happening in Biden's first house and Mars being in his 12th house, this is going to be not too great for him personally. I believe that he is definitely declining and I do believe that a transfer of power is likely going to happen. I believe that this Venus retrograde on top of Pluto, which is also around this Gemini full moon, could bring that change about as well over the next two or three months. I would be really surprised if a transfer of power did not happen then because things are really heating up in Kamala's chart as well, which is really going to push her to a massive change in her career. And that's like, that all makes sense uh, <laughs> in terms of Biden's chart as well. Many astrologers have been predicting this. I am not, you know, the only one that is predicting this, but I am personally predicting that the timing of it seems likely over the next uh, three months at the least, but I see something big happening with this solar eclipse and then echoing to this Gemini full moon. So we will see what goes down there. For most of the month, we have Venus finally coming into her conjunction with Pluto, where she will retrograde at the same time as Pluto is right up and coming up on the America's Pluto return. And so this is why this Venus retrograde is such a big fucking deal. And these first few weeks, of Venus conjunct Pluto are going to be like so shady and manipulative and controlling just shady AF you guys because right around when she's coming up on Pluto the sun is going to start squaring Neptune and so this looks like massive propaganda a major lie it could be things getting revealed that like lies getting exposed or revealed as well but this just looks like massive ma manipulation shadiness it's very conniving scandalous it just it, it looks pretty fucking shady so right around mid-month watch for shadiness watch for things that are not what they appear to be or things being exposed that you know are lies or whatever corruption like this is just really really like shisty <laughs> it just does not look genuine at all like there's something going on that's very ingenuine that is possibly bringing up power dynamics abuse of power flat out lies and propaganda another thing that we're gonna see i'm gonna do a whole separate video on venus retrograde and capricorn because it's a big fucking deal but venus on pluto like both deal with wealth and Pluto also deals with the deconstruction of something, like something literally being deconstructed, taken apart, blown up, major endings, major change, major transformation. And so like on a really big fucking scale. And so Venus conjunct Pluto is literally a massive change in the material world because it is in Capricorn and Earth sign. This is going to bring up a ton of transformation in these structures, systems, government, that kind of hold together our society, but also money, finances, banks. You know, most astrologers agree that this could appear to be a major financial or economical crash, major issues with the supply chain. And another big thing that's happening is Biden's infrastructure bill has been passed, and this infrastructure bill goes fucking perfectly with this Venus retrograde on Pluto and Capricorn. I don't know, like I'm not that well versed and what all this bill entails and you know, if what all it's gonna do and stuff. So don't come for me for that. Like I think something is going to happen with this infrastructure bill for sure. And the social bill, I think that he's trying to pass. All of this really aligns with Capricorn. Capricorn rules infrastructure. Capricorn rules structure, traditions, foundations, and serving. And so this, seems to really really align with this and aquarius rules social systems but with that pluto energy it's destructive and it is corrupted and can cause a lot of fear panic it just does not look promising <laughs> and like i said i'm not like if you know more about the infrastructure shit than i do and what this could all be pointing to with the venus pluto conjunction let me know down below but venus retrogrades like can symbolize disharmony, can symbolize civil unrest from time to time. Yeah, so we could be looking at civil unrest. We could be looking at pissed off people. We could be looking at a lot of issues with our economy because Venus rules money and goods and supply, like the supply of goods, you know, issues with the stock market. I think this could also affect crypto as well because Saturn is in Aquarius. All of that is gonna come up in some way, shape, 
shape or form. But like I said, I'm going to do a whole separate video on the Venus retrograde and more specific things that I see for that and everything that it you know, rules over and what we'll all see in our personal lives. So be watching out for that. Definitely make sure that you are subscribed with your notifications on because these next few videos that I do are really fucking important. Anyways, on the 13th, we have Mars moving into Sag where it will then conjunct the South Node. And this is definitely going to bring up like just a lot of political debating, political ideologies, uh, you know, like heated arguments over ideologies, belief systems, worldviews, religion, travel, all of that shit. So be watching out for that um, from like the 13th, probably until like the 15th or 16th, like that mid month section just gets really fucking shady. It could get kind of hostile, but just kind of keep an eye out for that. Then on the 18th, we have that Gemini full moon, which is so interesting because it's really kind of coinciding with the Venus retrograde that happens on the 19th. And then it's also a really peak timing period for Kamala, and it's also right by the winter solstice. So that's like 18th to 21st period is I'm really looking at that time period for something to go down so be on the lookout when venus retrogrades like boom it's gonna retrograde on pluto in capricorn and by then like i said it may not come out right away it may like take a little bit like it may slow down and take a little bit but when it comes out, we're gonna find out that this month like probably was the start of it. Like this month was the catalyst in some way, shape or form. And so that's why I'm saying like this month is such a big deal. It could come out with a bang right away. Like we'll see, but yeah. So that time period from the 18th to the 21st just, just really looks like an important time period, especially here in the US because all this shit is happening like right on the U.S.'s Pluto return. So you cannot tell me that's like just a coincidence. Like this is all pointing to some really major destructive energy. And this is in Capricorn. This is like a reality check. This is like what is necessary, right? Like we have to get our priorities in check. We have to figure out what is important, what's not. What do we need to like quit worrying about because it's just not fucking important. Like, what do we need to move forward with? Necessities are key. You know what I mean? Like, what's needed, what's not? Building something sturdy for ourselves. Like, a major shift and change in our goals and in what we think success looks like. The wealthy, the powerful are going to get really hit by this. Like we're going to see massive things of that. There's going to be a lot of lies, deceit, and corruption, especially financial corruption and economic corruption exposed. Like it's going to be really fucking big. And I'm going to go into more detail in this separate video, so don't worry. I'm just kind of touching over it now so I don't have to repeat myself twice but then on the 27th we have the third and final exact Uranus square of this year we will have one more square between these planets next year in October it will not be 100% exact but it'll be pretty fucking close but this is like the third and final square of this year and this is these two pla planets Saturn and Uranus have been the big fucking players all year this year. I talked about them a lot in the beginning of the year. I will link some of my videos down below that are really important. If you haven't seen, go watch them. A lot of my predictions came true for this year, but a lot of them are for really even like the next decade, the next century. So go fucking watch those predictions because they are really fucking big. And what we see in history with Saturn and Uranus is major civil unrest, like major upheaval, uh, revolutionary changes, oppression versus freedom, human rights movements, and a lot of rebellion, and just a lot of like social movements, social justice themes. Those are the things we've been seeing, right? And I, and I really talked about them last year for this year, and I really predicted a lot of that. But another thing that we see with Saturn Uranus is experimentation and new shiny inventions that come out that have never been used before, never been done before, and a rush to use these new shiny things or trust these new shiny things, right? Like do this new impulsive thing that ends up backfiring because it didn't have the history or the Saturnian influence behind it. And that's why I said like, boom, freaking year ago, dude, as soon, right around this time last year, when the you know what's when they announced the you know what's i literally said with this saturn uranus square that history shows that this does not work out this is this will backfire 
in some way, fucking shape or form. But anyways, the Saturn Uranus square uh, perfects again at the end of this month, which is definitely going to once again bring up those themes. Social unrest, you know, social upheaval, major kind of push and pull energy between oppression and restriction versus freedom, self-will and individuality. This is like really somewhat also wrapping up the story from the beginning of this year. So we could be really once again seeing themes of like, do we hold back ourselves for others or do we be true to ourselves? And, you know, freedom, rebellion, pressure, shakeups, uh, a need to break free from restrictions or heaviness. Like I said, something that's rushed into can have major consequences around this time. Big changes are upgrades to social systems, freedom versus restriction, a tightening down, liberation in the form of lack, pressure, restriction or separation, independence from the rules of society, alienation, outsiders, squeezing out those that will not follow society's rules. And so it can create a lot of outcast or a lot of outcast like movements. We're definitely going to see by the end of the month, which makes a lot of sense because that's it's like literally a week after Venus goes retrograde and by then I feel like we should be having at least remnants of you know possibly a, a financial like crisis or an economic crash or you know certain fears that are starting to be broadcasted about the economy wealth you know wealth transfer banks it's going to start coming out and the Saturn Uranus square can cause a lot of social unrest and upheaval at that time because of that reason and so then on the 28th Jupiter moves into Pisces which this is somewhat good <laughs> it was in Pisces from May to July of this year and so we did get like a little bit of taste and so Jupiter and Pisces I think will to a certain level bring more unity charity faith and unity faith in the collective and in oneness but with Saturn and Aquarius at the same time you know, there will be also this separateness or this detaching, you know, from the collective or trying to make everybody like the same, you know, Aquarius can be kind of like, you know, everybody is just the same and everybody's equal, but also the same and individuality doesn't have its place here. And so that also, you know, that can be kind of like the shadow side of Aquarius. So we have to watch out for that too. But you know, Pisces, Jupiter and Pisces is going to allow us to let go a little bit more, have faith in something bigger. Um, spirituality is going to become really fucking big. Optimism, creativity, integration, awareness, you know, compassion and empathy. I think hippie trends are really, really going to come back around. Like, also holistic health, science, uh, like I said in my video last year, I think this is really going to be when it's kind of like science becomes very dark and corrupted and kind of like uh, an authority in and of itself. I also think that there will be more compassion for people, more compassion for outsiders, the underdog, people that don't fit in, topics of freedom of faith and belief, harmonizing duality, escapism. And we could also see themes of avoidance, easily overwhelmed, running away, deception, lack of boundaries, seeing beyond like just typical like labels, classes, and groups of people. I think Pi Jupiter and Pisces will really help us with that. My only concern is I think we're either gonna like really see all of this virus stuff kind of dissipate, like it's just like not gonna be that serious because something else will take its place, or I feel like we could see something coming out that's like a lot more contagious. That's kind of like my feeling with Jupiter and Pisces. Jupiter will be in Pisces for, you know, the first like five or six months of, I don't have the dates written down right here, but like the first five or six months of 2022, and then it will move into Aries for a few months, and then it will move back into Pisces towards the end of 2022 and finish its transit in Pisces uh, before it moves back into Aries. So we will have a lot of next year with Jupiter and Pisces, which I think is a good thing. Jupiter and Aries, I think they're, <laughs> that may be a little problematic. Uh, definitely problematic uh, but I also feel like there will be really cool things to that as well like individuality and and doing you know doing your own thing is going to become very big so something else like really fucking big that's happening this month already again like it feels like it just got done retrograding but Mercury is going to move into its shadow to prepare for its retrograde uh, on December 29th, and it goes into shadow right on fucking Pluto um, as well. So we have Venus and Mercury kind of having this ret weird retrograde dance around Pluto as at like the same period of time of the U.S.'s Pluto return. 
Like, so, and planets do this, like, when there's, like, a big event, like, sometimes, like, a lot of times planets will kind of join in on that event with that planet, and so it's just, like, they're really signifying this Pluto return, like, they're really pointing to this Pluto return, and, uh, yeah, so Mercury will move into shadow on Pluto, and I think, like, if we don't already hear something, or if we didn't already hear something about, you know, the economy or the, you know, financial crisis by this time, then we for sure probably will on the 29th. It's going to be like, hey, you know, it's going to be spoken about more, like, it's the news is going to be out there, and so I think that there's going to be possibly like a lot of collective fear around this and it's going to be a really important time to learn how to really work with fear learn how to really work with these plutonian topics and transmute your fear and i talk a lot about that over on my patreon by the way like i did a whole workshop on it because of all of this stuff coming up like i'm doing everything ahead of time over there to prepare people um so if you are interested in my patreon i have tons of different memberships and do tons of different stuff over there each month we're going to be really talking about 2022 i'm going to be doing like actual chart readings for people for 2022 for my highest members um so if you want to check that out you can sign up the link is in the per description i'm going to be doing like early horoscopes and stuff over there like you'll get more of a sneak peek and more details over there than you will just here on my youtube but i am going to be talking about it here on my youtube as well if you can't afford it like you know with all this shit coming up like you need to take care of you i'd rather you take care of you if you don't have like the extra money you know what I mean always like that should come first so um anyways but that is basically December hopefully this made sense to you guys I know it's not very like you know oh my god yes we're like all gonna ascend to the 5d and shit woohoo like but it is definitely I don't know it's like scary but exciting like I've been saying this is going to really be a catalyst for a major change I think in our world and change that I think we need in some way or another. It may not seem like that at first um, and it may be a while until we really get there but I do believe that eventually we will be creating some kind of new world for ourselves or some kind of new system or something. I also believe that there will eventually be a point where there may be like an option to either kind of go into this new world that's being created it's like kind of like old but new like by those at the top of the pyramid or um to go and kind of create your own if that makes any sense and i'll talk more about that in my other video as well but like i, I just feel like there's going to be kind of like this crossroads between some kind of like really high tech new world versus something more natural old school etc so i don't know we'll see because i kind of keep getting like visions of both and yeah so anyways thank you guys so so much for watching this video please comment down below and let me know what you get from all of this and if you put anything together what you think is going to happen i'd love to hear your own predictions just even like if you're even if you're not like super into astrology, but you just hear all this and it makes you think like, oh, you know, this happening would really, really match with those themes. Like, I would love to hear it. I would love to hear your feedback. I would love to hear what happens for you in December and how your life is going and what you feel is coming. Um, if you are feeling this shit like intuitively, like it's just so eerie lately. But um, yeah, thank you guys so, so much for watching. I really, really, truly appreciate your support. And I will see you guys in my next few videos that you need to make sure that you watch because they're really fucking important. Important. <laughs>